All right. I think we're good to go. Excellent. Outstanding. All right. H hello and welcome to Well, There's Your Problem. It's a podcast about engineering disasters with slides. Uh, I'm Justin Rosniak. I'm the person who's talking right now. My pronouns are he and him. All right, go. I'm Alice Goldwell Kelly. I'm the person who's talking now. My pronouns are she and her. Yay, Liam. Yay, yeah, Liam. Hi, I'm Liam Anderson. My pronouns are he and him. And we have a guest. Hey, I'm I'm guest. Uh, my pronouns are he and him, and also my name is Francis. <laughs> and you Wrong come to order. us from. <laughs> <laughs> and you come to us from a second podcast. There are other podcasts out there, there beyond other podcasts, this one. Yes. Other art, other art shop. Part, part of the uh, the the extended Bethaniverse of yeah. podcasts. Of, Still uh, narrowly being held together, thanks to the uh, England U.S. tie. Yeah, um, just, <laughs> much like the internet, the entire podcasting industry is held up by one like really stressed out ginger guy in london yes <laughs> <laughs> well I'm, I'm excited to talk to you guys today about a boat um there's two things that i find very funny is when the british fail and when the navy fail so when there's a british <laughs> navy failure ooh, it just uh it gives me a little tingle. I repeat myself yeah Ro yes. royal navy cells are coping and seething over u.s navy chads sort of thing yeah. yes that's right. Maybe maybe one day England, too, can build a boat that breaks when it gets wet. I mean, that's just American <laughs> planning right there. Uh, uh, so this is, what, the HMS Captain? Yes, this is a drawing of the HMS Captain, uh, roughly 1860s-ish. This is uh, a, a British, um, a British, uh, it's, it's a, uh, uh, what do we want to call it, a uh experimental kind of ship uh Ooh, it okay. did not really you know somebody it was they were trying some new stuff they wanted to do some new things you to can it. you can kind of tell they were running out of ideas because they named it after like stuff you would find on a boat sort of casting yes. around like uh is, is a captain uh captain and, uh the lieutenant uh the ship's cap <laughs> uh <laughs> and, and at a certain at a certain point in time uh you know uh like anything else on this uh an experimental ship is great on paper and then it ends up killing like 500 people who had absolutely nothing to do with it um thus thus is the uh the story of really anything when we come onto this show uh it's just how is this going to kill roughly 500 people Liam, I'm going to yeah. take those skittles away from you like a grade school teacher. I was about to say, yeah. Uh... <laughs> oh, oh. oh my god. But Before we talk about the HMS captain, we have to do a the giant goddamn news. Tone. Yes. Oh, we had to talk about it eventually. We recorded... Yeah, we, we... We recorded an episode before we got the chance to. <clears throat> it was a bonus, and like, I don't think any of us are feeling up to it. Like, yes. uh, we talk about a lot of bad shit on this show, but you know, uh, the uh, mass shooting at uh, an LGBT nightclub in Colorado Springs kind of cuts a bit closer to home for me, at least. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, some Mormon incel fucker whose like dad is a right wing Christian messed up porn star and whose granddad is a, a sort of MAGA California state representative. Shot up a gay bar, killed like five people, injured over a dozen, I think. And the headline yes. that I've written here, if you're if you're just listening, is I I cannot say the headline that I want to say, but uh, I, we all know who's responsible for these acts of of terrorism. Uh, yeah, and we've experienced an interesting shift in tone. Right, it used to be the time was, and uh, Britain, it's still here. Our right wing is still here. Is you cry when you get what you want, right? You say. Uh, will no one rid me of this turbulent priest? Uh, yeah, drag queen story time, uh, groomers, uh, things of this nature. And then when someone takes you up on it and kills a bunch of people, you kind of you feel bad and you go, "Oh well, you know, I'm actually being insulted by people attributing this to me." Um, the American right wing has now sort of shifted to a new phase of laughing because you got what you wanted and saying, "No, this is yes. good, actually." Um, yes. And, uh, you know, those people have names. You can talk about Matt Walsh or Nick Fuentes or whoever, and uh, yeah, whoever is like instrumental to this backlash, to the backlash, to the backlash. Um, and I, I think ultimately what it comes down to is someone needs to make those people afraid. There are legal and extra legal ways of doing that. I'm not going to have to cut this anyway, but. Uh, Take your <laughs> for a canoe ride. Uh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Just, but um, um, there is something to be said in. 
you know, I, I know that there are people who are uncomfortable with purchasing firearms, owning firearms, but at the very least, you should know how to physically defend yourself. Well, the thing is, like, yeah. in terms of my, my, my queer friends in the US, it's, it went from like a 50-50 divide between very heavily armed and totally unarmed to like 90-10. Um, yeah, and that there's like a lot of people who are, have very good reasons to like be uncomfortable owning firearms, right? Like eh, there is, it's like it's a it's a calculus of risk. But yeah. if you if you have like yeah. a history of like you know uh, suicidal ideations, mm -hmm. don't have a gun in the house because it's a magical uh, life goes away button. Yeah, um, yeah. you know, there's there's really no taking that one back. And if you fuck it up. Uh, that's Ooh, gonna yeah. be even worse for you. So, yeah. <laughs> don't don't get a gun if you don't feel comfortable with it. But at least you know, um, take take some take some self defense stuff. Take you know, some first if, aid if classes. Take take yeah. a take a class on like stopping bleeding, which is always very handy. Yep. Uh, it field, like field medic yeah, that sort of, of thing. Carry a, a tourniquet that, uh, or two or four on you. Um, yeah, if you don't if you don't want to do that, you can do logistics. Um, yeah. <laughs> And just in yeah. general, run, if, run, if, up behind, if you... run up behind somebody with an MRE, just be like, "You hungry? <laughs> Help you?" Yeah, listen for every for every trans woman who like kicks a mass shooter's face, and there are another ten who don't do any of the actual kicking, but are necessary to make that process work. Um, yes, I mean, honestly, I would say this has been a sea change for a lot of people, and the biggest one is if you are organizing. Any kind of event, any kind of gathering, you need to be thinking about this. You need to be thinking about safety in these terms, and you need to plan for these eventualities. And that's what I see people doing. It's grim that you have to, uh, but it will make people safer if you do. And it's, I don't know, if you compare this to the the shooting at Pulse, which had, I, I think, something like 50 people dead, it's yep. perverse to say about something so terrible, but there are a lot of ways in which this could have been even worse. And you know, we should call out the the fact that uh, people acted heroically in a time of, of crisis, you know, and, and, and it's, that it's, it's we one of those things. Safe. I mean, that's how it yeah. works. It's 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 like a cultural change, and I think it's I think you're going to look at this in time as being uh, the same thing as happened for hijackings after nine eleven. Right? Is there was a change in how people responded to it instinctively? You can't hijack yes. a plane anymore because everyone's going to try and jump you. And I, I think that's kind of like, that's the place where a lot of Americans are getting to with mass shootings anyway, even before this. Um, you know, I never thought about that, of like, there being generational trauma of like millennials to be like, if somebody stands up on a plane and like looks oh, yeah. threatening, at least half the plane is going to be like, nope, nope, nope. taking you <laughs> down, don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, You're not going to slam me in the side of a building, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. So, well, same thing. And so... I don't know who our generation's Mark Wahlberg is. Who's going to be like, yo, if I'd been there, it would have gone Mark down <laughs> a little differently. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no. And and this guy, he didn't manage to kill himself or get killed by the cops or anyone else. He was taken alive and like badly beaten and humiliated. And of course, you know, he's going to try and troll and uh, like get grab attention during the trial. I'm not going to pay attention to it. You shouldn't either. But I think it's it's a good message to send out that like if you try this, not only are you not going to be able to throw your life away, but you're probably going to spend a long time in prison wishing that you had been able to, uh, yes. and also uh, you are going to be humiliated into the bargain. Um, and that's that's good, you know. You should be afraid to do these things. Yeah, absolutely, and it does involve. Physical. Uh, I mean, at some point, it's going to involve physical violence with Fash, sure. and you know, you, I, I think it's it's okay. It's okay to harm fascists, or the you, you are allowed to destroy people who seek to destroy you. It's all right. Yeah, yeah. self defense is a thing. It's enshrined in the Constitution. Yeah, <laughs> one of one of the few good things is that you get to own a gun too. Is the thing yes. like? And I, I have seen. <clears throat> I did see a couple uh, tweets about like, oh, they're there should be changes to gun laws because you're not supposed to do guns like that. It's like, what part of shall not be infringed? Like, look, I don't believe in all that bullshit Second Amendment stuff. You know, it says in there, a militia, you're not a militia, mm. you're just a bunch of dumb shits that are drunk. Um, which, to be fair, that is what militias were in yeah. the 1700s, but... Still kind of different. are, depending on where you go. Yeah, I... Yeah. This is true. 
I, I mean, I think it's kind of the Second Amendment's been sort of Pandora's box, right? Like, I, I would never support, uh, like, loosening firearms laws here, for instance, for anyone other than me, and I only want to shoot bottles and cans off of a fence, uh, because there's a very low level of firearms proliferation, right? Nobody has guns, pretty much, compared to the US. Whereas, even if, like, tomorrow you had, an, like, you just repealed the Second Amendment, there's millions of guns that aren't going anywhere, and that's just what you have to sort of react to, and that's how you have to change the way that you think and respond to it. Um, yeah. I mean, you I mean, gotta got got um... wonder if it, at, at this point, like a program like they had in Australia would even have an effect, you know, where they did like Probably a mass not. gun buyback across the country. I don't think so. Yeah. Um, they were no. Here, here's the thing. the The problem with the idea of a mass gun buyback is that the only people who are going to be doing that are going to be uh, late. If you've ever seen pictures, like, here's some of the guns that we got from a gun buyback, and they're like these ancient fucking muskets or rusted out pieces of I shit. I this out nobody... of a bog this morning. Right, right. like, nobody on the right... printed guns. Congratulations, you're now the one true king of England. Right. Yeah. No, nobody on the right is going to give up their guns, and people on the left aren't going to be stupid enough to give up their guns at this point. Like, you know, it... Was and, this... and I, I am perfectly fine with the complete disarmament of America, only if cops go first. Like, and this is, this is the take, thing, yeah. Like take the, the, hand, the in- take the cops, take the guns out of every cop's hands. No cop gets a gun anymore. Like yeah. even SWAT teams should be very. And then you can take everybody else's guns. But until you're going to take it from the cops, I don't. And understand, this isn't a real like you know belief. It's just I know that nobody's going to take away the fucking cops' guns. So you should be, you know, you should yeah. be armed yourself. I guess. I guess the other thing is that the entire sort of like firearms owning right, which is to say, I guess the right, has been primed for thirty, forty years for the idea that f- the feds are going to come and take your guns mm-hmm. away. Um, yes, and I think that's something that has been successfully forestalled by them. Um, and I right. mean, I don't know who they think that. Like, it's it's very strange to be, uh, you know, the cop left wing ATF agents. Yeah, uh, be yes. afraid of like if you get in like the reason you are buying an AR fifteen is to shoot cops. Like that is that is the only thing that you're buying an AR fifteen for. If you're buying, oh, I'm going to protect myself from the government. That means shooting cops. So yeah. you know, be be uh, uh, cognizant of that. And I'm not saying don't buy an AR because they're fun as hell to shoot, but. You know they're they're made for a specific thing, and that's to shoot cops. So, uh, just or in this case, keep... your coworkers are just you know, victims of whatever hate crime you have in mind. Um, right, thirty to fifty feral hogs. <sighs> yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, uh. I mean, I, I I kind of one thing I will say in, in defense of the armed left, not that they need me to defend them, is that uh, one or other sort of like anti-fascist groups don't know who exactly. Uh, successfully, sort of like protected by force of arms, by like standing outside some I don't know drag queen story time, whatever. Yes. Um, yeah. And the usual parade of sort of like right wing freaks and hogs show up, and all they could really do was uh, like make videos making fun of you. And it's like that. Stare down the barrel of an SKS. Yes. Yeah. Fine, exactly. Whatever. You go ahead. You know that that really takes the sting out of it. I think. Um, so yeah, th- another another vignette in our long second bleeding Kansas, um, which is it, it's not good. And living in in twenty twenty two is is not pleasant. Yeah, I mean, I'm... sort of as a a nine eleven analog there. You know, if you have a bunch of you know a, a special group of armed men outside of the. Uh, the uh, the trans uh, st- you saying uh, we need uh, a, the... a federal gay marshals because I one hundred percent support this. Well, mm-hmm. I was thinking more like the trans security agency, um, <laughs> you know, the new TSA. Yeah, TSA. yeah. <laughs> you just you just need to put the word around that like maybe one person in like you keep every the, you club is the current yeah. TSA, yeah. but just start scratching off all the yeah. it. From yes. all the logos, be like, no, we're reusing this. You know how much it costs to make a logo? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just station them outside the drag queen story hour. No one's gonna bother you. <laughs> uh, we finally we we found a way to make this less horrifying to talk about. Good. I'm yeah. glad. Uh as long as they as long as they don't put the body scanners in, you know, because that's no. <laughs> yeah, that. uh, next up in the they want you in news. only if you set off the thing. That's right. Found a good use for that detector. Um, so you may have, you may have seen this column doing the rounds on Twitter. Yes. Um, 
so this is this is at a new building at Ohio State University or with the Ohio State University. Yeah, it's a hospital um, building. Uh, yeah. uh, yes, who, it is. who we should say, uh, being the the resident asshole on this show, uh, lost by one second, please. That's right. Number two, Ohio State lost. Uh, oh, yes, it was. I'll, I'll just have it in a second. Uh, <laughs> please, just one more second. God damn, where is this thing? Oh, yes, they lost by 22 to Michigan. Ouch. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Number two, Ohio State, who I hate. I hate Michigan, too, but lost by 22 to Michigan. So good job there, assholes. You they suck. Lost, they lost to U of M, and also the hospital's falling right? down. Mm-hmm. Yes. Football, yeah. Aaron. Yeah. You know, my favorite, is- my favorite thing is that uh, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, former uh, president of Iran, is a Michigan fan. That is I genuinely mean, you know, like a program at random. They're not like a bad one. Yeah. I, I, I have Saddam, re- Saddam Hussein has a key to the city of Detroit. Like yeah. um, <laughs> Middle East dictators <laughs> and, true. and Michigan are, are hand in hand, really. I have yeah, retweeted I a, a tweet must, from... must account for his crimes. <laughs> a tweet from Mahmoud Ahmadinejad uh, for 16th of September 2018 with a hard work ethic. Inshallah, the U of M will return to its glory days. <laughs> <laughs> So this is this is like an inpatient hospital tower they're building. Um, yes. I, I, they tried to put it like was a, unclear to me if it was a new building or if it was an addition to. An I existing believe it was building. an addition. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're, they're they're putting a like a, a radiation oncology center like on top of it. And a radiation oncology center that's a a place where they like shoot radiation at cancers. It has a lot of lead yeah, in so there. It's a very heavy building. The, the story was that the the building was designed. It was in under construction up to six floors. They got a big grant from someone and they were like, well, let's put a new uh, radiation facility in, add an extra floor to the building and then repurpose one of the existing floors for uh, radiation therapy. Right. And um, when you do radiation therapy today, you don't use uh, lead. I, I believe it's the shielding is all concrete. And that means four foot thick floors, four foot thick walls, four foot thick ceiling, ceilings. Right. Instead. Uh, we developed a unique framing system that allowed the shielding concrete to be cast entirely from above. Hold on. Eliminating the need for concrete shoring. Is that no, how that I works? I don't quite think that's right. <laughs> but the, the good news is that this is fake news, or so I'm told, right? Because if you saw this do the numbers on Twitter, it got like you know, 10,000 likes, something like. Um, and the tweet was, New Tower at the James sank nine inches over the weekend. Ohio State evacuated all crews and are trying to enlist German engineers to look at the problem. <laughs> These picks from the second floor have 20 plus floors above them. Uh, I, I thought Operation it was very... Paperclip 2.0 is real fucking weird, <laughs> yeah. but all right. About to say, they just yeah. grabbed the nearest, the nearest German man. Um, this is how far, yeah. how far America has fallen. It no longer needs to steal Nazi scientists for V2 rockets. It's just like, how do we build building, Germans? <laughs> how do we put the building up? And you got a guy, we brought over a German engineer. I, I work for Mercedes. I have no fucking clue. <laughs> <laughs> you German, how do I make a building? A brand new German racism is just assuming they're all accomplished architects. <laughs> Ohio, State, Ohio State spokesman Ben Johnson said Friday that the cracking was the result of a compression issue on one concrete column, uh, and the, the problem appears to be isolated to a single column, there are more than 150 other concrete columns on that level of the building that they think are fine, but they're pausing to like evaluate all of them. Um, I, they, they claim that this does not affect the rest of the building, it's just this one column. I don't know whether mm-hmm, that's true or mm-hmm. not, but that's what they say. And mm-hmm, then, mm-hmm. I do how appreciate... Many of the, of the, how many of the compartments flooded? <laughs> right, yes. Uh, this, is, I, this is a situation, th- this is a condition that you as a structural engineer should look at and say, get everyone out of the building now. Um, because this is, you know, if one column like this goes, I mean, admittedly, there's a lot of redundancy in the building, but if you see one column that looks like this, that is, it has this much, this is a straight up structural failure. This is not, it may look like, you know, a little crack or something, you know, and maybe it's still, this is effectively bearing no load whatsoever. Um, and this this is a serious serious problem, especially if you have a huge radiation therapy department right above you. Um, <laughs> the good news Look, is, I used to I, I used to live in an old house. I used to my last house was 140 years old. You go down to Home Depot, you get some floor jacks, you'll be fine. Throw like four of them <laughs> up there, it'll be good. 
<laughs> my my favorite part of Ohio State's sort of like correction about this is they've gone. It's just the one column, so it's fine. We are evacuating okay. the building and pausing all work on it, but it's just the one building. However, there is there's no re- there is no truth to the reports that the university is bringing in German engineers. The additional third party <laughs> yeah. engineers from Chicago. <laughs> Yeah, we're bringing yeah. we're bringing in some checks. Yeah. <laughs> You're in one you Polish engineer. Blues Brothers, it's yeah. gotta go like that. <laughs> Are you from the police? No, ma'am. <laughs> we're engineers. <laughs> <laughs> so we we shall see if this falls down or not. But um, yeah. yeah, it's bad. You shouldn't. It shouldn't look like that. I don't think. Well, I look yeah. forward to the uh, the future show about this, uh, and we talk about Ohio State Building Seven, which is burned for <laughs> eight hours straight. <laughs> no, no relation to this uh, whatsoever. They just let it catch on fire because it's Ohio. Yeah. It's just across from the thing. Yeah, sort of Ohio version of Donald Trump calling in to be like, I have the the tallest building in Ohio now. Yes. Do you know Ohio spelled backwards is Ohio. Damn. What fucking is a dickhead? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, I anyway, That was the goddamn news. Uh, before we get underway here, does Alice have a bit of a robot voice to anyone else, or is it yes. just me? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. that's bad. Is it? Is it? Uh, it's workable. Or if you're well, recording locally, you should be yeah. fine. Yeah, it's probably going to be and, relevant. Yeah, you should be fine as long as you got the local. Yeah. I was worried about something on problem. my side. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Devin. Hope you're yeah. having fun editing this. Although, I, I, technically, Zencaster also records locally and then uploads it yeah. at the end. So, yeah. yeah. Well, hi, hi, Devin. I hope I don't have robot voice on this because I don't want to have to record yeah. this twice, but we will see. Yeah. <laughs> Devin fucking rolls, man. Oh, yeah. It'll be fine. I'm yes. sure we can, like, I'm sure Devin can artfully edit you out if necessary. <laughs> or just, or yeah, Devin's got like multiple podcast. years of podcasts to use. We could just oh, work you into different Yeah, ones. yeah. They definitely Yo, have like, sick. My, like an my Alice voice, like, Gundam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, Painting what if you Alice Gundam. imagine? I, I imagine if we could, we could figure this out and get like Alice as a Siri voice. We just need you to make like all the <laughs> correct, you know, vocalizations and then smash them yeah, all together. Yeah, yeah. And yes. I, 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 I would do this. Fake. I would do this. I would upload my voice and let anyone use it for like text to speech. I think that would be funny. I can see no <laughs> downsides to this. Um, yeah, just yeah. Alice yelling, turn left, cunt. <laughs> <laughs> In 500 meters, turn left, cunt. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> A lot of people listen to this podcast while they're driving, and yes, I, I think about that every so often. We look forward to interfering with your navigation operation. There was there that's, was an, a, right. a compilation of like dash cam video accidents where our podcast was on in one of the accidents. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's this? What's this cool raft I'm looking at here? Yeah, I'm looking so, at a raft here. So this is. So let's talk about the captain. This is not the captain. This is the lady Nancy. Um, this is <laughs> the two what? genders. Let's talk about the boat, but not that boat. This other boat. Well, this is the boat that we're looking at right now. I didn't All right, re- be that way. Yeah. Well, do you want to go back like three slides and take a look? I got more no, pictures of the I captain. I already looked it's at fine. the boat, Francis. It's a fucking boat. It's you know I what like, a boat looks like. I like the lady Nancy. I like this thing. It's I like it's a cannon. Name. It's a cannon on a raft. It basically that's that's what naval war was for an extended period of time. So the HMS Captain is the very first ocean going turret ship gunship. And what that means is that, you know, in the time of naval warfare at the time, you had your broad ships and you stuck your cannons out the side. And if you wanted to shoot those motherfuckers over there, you had to turn the boat and you had to line. You had to turn the whole boat so that the cannons could shoot. Right. Hmm. But. They wanted, it's like, what if instead of just up and down, we can make a cannon also go left and right, which is, you know, what cannons do now. Like every, every weapon somewhere is, you know, on a boat is, is a turret ship of some kind. But this is before turrets. Um, I'm and raising so the lady my hand Nancy, here with a question. Yes. Is this like pre or at the same time as monitors, your, your civil war sort of what if I put a turret on a ship thing? <coughs> It is kind of the same, the same thing going, and I don't know if uh, if the the inventor of the uh, the turret ship who who 
patented this might have had a case against the CSA at the time. The CSA was too busy <laughs> killing their own people inside of the ver- the world's first submarine. So they had they had their own things going. Oh, yeah. The Hunley. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Kill, killed so many Confederates. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so this is the weapon of the war. <laughs> Listen, if you if you're posting like Union Wave or whatever, just bear in mind no one will love killing Confederate soldiers as much as the Confederacy did. Oh mm-hmm. God, this is, it was their favorite thing is just uh, to to feed a bunch of fifteen year old boys into a meat grinder. <laughs> Almost but British, though. Yeah, this is this is the Lady Nancy. This is the very first turret ship that was created by Captain Cowper Philip Coles. Uh, that first name is spelled C O W P E R. Uh, Sounds like an ad agency. It is. Well, he's British, so I don't. Uh, you tell God, me. Of course, he fucking does. This um, reminds me of the uh, the little dinghies that go down, up and down the the uh, waterways of the Jersey Shore. Was so it's just like a dinghy, but the Coast Guard then mounts a fifty cal to it. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen those before. They're great. Oh, yeah. uh, just it's it's basically a boat technical. Mm-hmm. My uh, my went back when I rode in high school, the Coast Guard had those on the Anacostia River, and they would always pull over our rowing coach because he was making a wake in a no wake zone, and then they'd give him a ticket, and then they would go <laughs> away, and then he would go back up to the speed he was before, and then he'd get another ticket, and it was pretty funny. Every time someone's at the shore and uh, makes a wake in a no wake zone, I do have to resist the urge to find an RPG seven and let them know <laughs> my feelings. On Going their, sort of on like Somali pirate mode on, on yeah. like a yes. yeah yeah I uh, especially the guy with the fucking Nova Villanova boat who I hope <laughs> excellent. What body of water are you guys next to? The Delaware. Oh, okay. Because, I mean, we don't, I don't have, like, well, because I think about no wake areas in, in like, lake. Oh, what I'm of. talking about is uh, a bay in South Jersey. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I don't go, I don't touch oceans. They're gross. Fish fucking up. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. Aren't you the guy who, are, are you the guy on the Mississippi that and you're, con- and you're constantly trying to uh, find some freighters or something? Haven't we had this discussion? Do I, I don't go into the Mississippi either. That's dangerous. The ocean at least won't kill me immediately. The, the river uh, yeah, will. Fair enough, man. <laughs> If it, uh, if it, if like it, if you know the undertow doesn't get me, some something from fucking Minnesota will. Some goddamn oh, yeah. hot know. plate from Minnesota is gonna. Oh god! <laughs> One of six hundred thousand diseases at once. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is the Lady Nancy. This is the very first, uh, the very first turret gunship, um, and this is being used to kill Russians during the Crimean War. So, uh, this is about eighteen oh. fifties or so. Uh, you know. Captain Phillips was just like, what if we put a, a, a cannon here, but we can move it left and right as well as up and down. And uh, somebody in, in England said, that's absolutely brilliant. Make us some ships. Uh, so next slide, please. Uh, this, this is a look. Uh, this, yes. this man. This, this man looks haunted. Uh, yes. <laughs> I um, love 18, Oprah Din. 1800s Guillermo del Toro here. Um <laughs> <laughs> this is this is Captain Cowper Phillips. So a little background on him. Um, as as a young man uh, born in the early 1800s, he joined the Royal Navy at the age of 11, as uh, yeah, as classic. many many young he, boys do. Did yeah. did he actually join at the age of 11, or was he like signed on at 11 and then? Because that was a, like a a real thing. Was like you would sign your kids onto the Navy as early as possible to gain them seniority while they were yes. still young, which I really yeah, I like. I'm not sure if that's uh, you know what he may have had aspirations at the age of 11 too. Um, I don't I don't know the I don't know how uh, the kids of the 1800s really thought about things like that. It would probably be better than um, living on the streets. I don't know, but because then you become a powder monkey and yeah, I mean it it's was incredibly kind of like, dangerous. It's yeah. like a state within a state. Like the the navy had its own schools, uh, you know, all of this kind of stuff. So yeah, that's not it's not that surprising to me. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't love government cradle to grave? This is basically socialism, oh, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fully, fully navalized, um, not luxury, fully, fully navalized austerity communism. Exactly. Yes. So he survived long enough in the navy to become a lieutenant, um, and he was commanding a paddle boat in the Black Sea that was named the Stromboli. Um, oh yes, I, <laughs> I too love to command a Stromboli into my mouth <laughs> and eat it. <laughs> Commanding the Stromboli along the Black Sea when he came up with the idea with a turret gun, uh, which I assume is just what if a gun went left and right, um, yes. as well as up and down. 
But he came up with it. Uh, he slapped it onto the Lady Nancy, which we saw earlier, and which killed a bunch of Russians just like with it. Some some barrels like lashed together, right? Like it's fully an improvised raft. Yeah. What was, the, what was the christening for that like? <laughs> well, I you mean, like it was in the middle a of a of war, so it was it. two <laughs> bottles of rum, Roz. Two yeah, bottles it's... of grog. <laughs> the, the the christening was probably somebody's brains as they uh, were oh. shoving it out because it was made in the middle of a war. So, oh, that'll do it. Yeah, yeah. It's, you don't you don't have a whole lot of time for just you know get a raft, put a gun on it, and uh, go kill Russians with it. I suppose this is the 1800s. I don't know if that's good or bad back then. Um, <laughs> it was the British and the Russians, so probably both sides deserve to get shot so, in the face. Yeah, all of the European wars of the period are very much like everybody's kind of equally bad more or less i mean right like if if you didn't start the war you probably would have started another one so it's yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this was so effective at killing russians uh that he patented the design and the navy commissioned him to start doing some tests of the turret gun because they're like this is a great idea turning a gun left and right why didn't we ever think of this um, so he had a good idea with the turret, but uh, and he was really good at d designing weapons. He understood weapon systems, um, but he did not understand boats very well. Even though, like, he probably understood ships more than any of us do because he, you know, grew up on ships. But yeah. like, this doesn't necessarily mean that you know how to build a ship. You don't really have a lot of like technical training to, to like operate one at that point. Yeah, right? I don't imagine yeah, you join the 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 navy at the age of eleven. And they're like, cool, let's get you into our you know our naval command and teach you about buoyancy and ballast and shit and shit like that. I was about to say he's, he worked on a ship, but he's no shipwright. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> buoyancy is like probably what the navy called recruiting eleven year olds in the first place. <laughs> oh yes. God. <laughs> So uh, the admirality featuring, featuring our, our lead recruitment officer, Socrates. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So um, the people that were in charge of the British Navy at the time were called the Admiralty, I guess, because the Royals did buoyancy. <laughs> the, the Admiralty. They yeah, it was are. a joke about fucking kids, Roz. Yeah. Well, Archimedes <laughs> was also Greek. Oh, <laughs> we do better than to trade in stereotypes, sir. I will not have no, this. No, it doesn't matter. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> we just, we're just, you know, good enough to do the uh, the stereotypes that aren't offensive. <laughs> Most like how Peruvians love mayonnaise or something. I don't know. We can start that one up. I, I buy that. Yeah, let's, let, let's. You know what's a fun one that that is absolutely true? Hmm. Uh, and I I can say this confidently because I used to work in a liquor store in South Philly. Oh boy, Cambodians <laughs> love Hennessy. <laughs> <laughs> that's not that's not a no bad thing for a stereotype, I would say. It's like, no. oh, you you motherfuckers enjoy cognac. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. they're they, like, it's it's the damnedest thing because you just get Cambodians coming in and be like, yeah, like let me get like four handles of Hennessy. Be like, all right, cool. Like you gonna drink this by yourself or what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if you work in a liquor store, you don't want to know the answer to those questions. No, you usually don't. Sure, you just yeah, get well, drunk bummers at 11 a.m. and they're mad because you won't sell them like a pint of Fireball or some shit. Well, why won't you I sell me the a pint of Fireball? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm of age. I should be able to drink the, the most rot gut shit. Yeah, you I can ever drink want. that, but you can't be visibly intoxicated while I'm selling it to you, Francis. Oh, you shut up, you cop. Don't be a cop. <laughs> Visibly intoxicated and like fifty-five years old and belligerent. Well, buddy, you're having a good. <laughs> Bummers are always a... mean drunks. I, 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 you know, I don't really care. Yeah, you, you know wanna... why they're mean drunks? Because you wouldn't sell them the fucking fireball. <laughs> yeah, he deserved it. I hope he's... <laughs> <laughs> he's probably just gonna. He's just wearing blackface to the grave. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Liam's just like, look at this guy having a good time. Better shit all over that. <laughs> <laughs> to my credit, I was also going through a very bad breakup, so I. I'm doubling down and hoping that guy's <laughs> shout out to friend of the pod bruce's mummer's troop which is the not racist and gay friendly mm -hmm. one i can't remember mm -hmm. the name of it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> sure i can't believe you imported morris dancers or i guess we imported morris dancers to you that's so like offensive of us yeah thanks for nothing <laughs> assholes yeah yeah what is a morris dancer don't worry about uh, it. Uh, traditional English folk ways sometimes involving uh, blackface makeup, where you do a oh, little wow. dance with yeah. your friends and like mm. whack some sticks and rhythm together. I will say, Roz's little giggle makes me so happy. Every year they try to cut, they try to crack down on the various racisms which occur at the Mummers Parade. 
and it's gotten better, but it's not there yet. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, this podcast taking a brave stance for like liberalism and incremental reform. You know, the arc of the yes. Mama's Parade may be long, but it bends towards justice. It yes. most certainly does not bend towards justice. <laughs> yeah, I can say that with hundred and five percent confidence. Last year there doing was doing almost it? no. Last year there was almost no blackface at all. Yeah, there was only a couple <laughs> troops doing it. Our, just, just Roz in a tie and, and suit, just being like, racism has dropped seventy five percent on the Mummers board this year. Over the past fifty years, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't talk. Missouri has its own like racism. Um, Oh ball, yeah, you ball, have the, the like masked the bull thing. That's yeah, the so fucked. Uh, d- yeah, it's racist prom, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Racist prom brackets Masonic and like Masons. Masonry is fucking wild. It's I, very, it's very mm. gross because like the Veil Prophet itself is usually some like very old businessman who's you know like 50, 60 years old, and then the debutante is some like rich guy, sixteen year old daughter. Uh, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, it's gross. It's gross, and. uh if a, you know, Hellfire missile accidentally fell off of something and onto the Ritz-Carlton <laughs> while it was happening, I would say that it's fine. So, so no great loss, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like the Ritz-Carlton, it's a very nice hotel, but they can rebuild that. It's fine. <laughs> Alright, so, um, Coles wanted to, to build a ship, uh, and he had some ideas, he had some uh, ways to incorporate some stuff in. He's like, I bet we can do this with the turret, uh, but the admiralty at the time was just like, "Look, man, we're gonna take." It'll drive me crazy if you if yeah. you call the admiralty the admiralty every time. Admiralty, <laughs> admiralty. admiralty. Yeah. How can admiralty? we? Alice, how is it pronounced? Admiralty. 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 Yeah. Admiralty. Whatever upsets Alice the most, do that. Just add more syllables to it. Yeah. Fine. I, unfortunately <laughs> for you, Alice, I have been saying admiralty in my head for like the last. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. I'll just cut been... and seethe. It's it's fine. When you become an you admiral, what? that's admiralification. Yes. It's when you admire an admiral. We're gonna start what? calling you Alice. There we go. A <laughs> A Ron. Alice, Alice uh, admiralty. <laughs> so uh, they still wanted the 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 ad the. It doesn't British... matter, Francis. Go ahead. <laughs> now, now I've thrown you the up. British like, Navy guy just still didn't say it. anything. You know, the British Navy guys still wanted it. So they're like, "Well, we're going to start kind of designing our own stuff." Um, next slide, please. Now this is another ship that is not uh, the HMS Captain. What this is is the HMS Prince Albert. Uh, this ship Named came about piercing, because, of course, yeah, yeah, Coles was. Uh, friends with um uh prince albert as one is i guess when you're rich and british yeah and i mean albert, albert took a lot of interest in the military and and the navy for like in a sort of playing with toy soldiers way like he designed helmets and stuff in his free time um so yeah he didn't really have anything else to do well, I mean, I guess if you're not the king, like you're just married to the queen. Yeah, he's yeah. Like, he's he's like all, all there like, is like to any do is dude, like you need to have you need hobbies. You need yeah. a pod shack to hang out in. You need yeah, you, you know you, you do to, this. You design you some helmets. You get your dick pissed. The, the, you know we've all been there. Yeah, yeah. Some a man a man needs the putter. Um. So this is the uh one of the first kind of uh, ships that was built with all of these. Uh, it had four turrets on it. But it was not really an ocean going. It was only for coastal defense because these things were really heavy, um, as you can imagine. The mm, the, the gun, the problem, littoral combat ship of its day. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. again not. Coles is not a ship designer. Um, he's a gun designer, and he made a really good gun. Like this gun could move back and it could go left and right. Man, it's all anybody ever wanted. And presumably. Uh, Someone in the Royal Navy did design ships. Why didn't they just fucking throw yeah, them at that guy? Fuck we're, that guy. We're gonna we're gonna get there, Alice. Don't worry. Okay. Don't worry. Okay. The story is unfolding. Next you slide. Probably please. put two guys on this job, I think. I'm not <laughs> sure, but I think. <laughs> yeah, I forgot the the part of a civil engineering bachelor's degree that allows you to design warships, Roz. So this is guy this who is refused a, to work for Lockheed. This is why, again, you need more than one person on the design team. Uh, don't blame me. I went to school for math. <laughs> well, we're we're gonna we're gonna get to why all of this uh, happened as well because there's somebody who wrote uh, an entire like after action review on why on how everybody fucked this up. But 
this this is we're looking right now. This is your modern turret gun. So I want to I want to showcase the turret gun because we've got to talk about some kind. We got to talk about different you know considerations that have to be made for something like this. So yeah. at the time, most ships were still powered by by wind. Um, steam engines were kind of coming in, uh, but the the Prince Albert, as we were seeing beforehand, that was a steam uh, a steamship. But they didn't, I mean, steam didn't go very far at the time. So you still had a lot of uh, uh, of sails to do. You have to keep uh, like sails... recoaling them and shit, which is handy for a coastal yes. defense thing. You just throw it back into port whenever. Exactly. You go, you shovel some more coal onto it, and you let it float around a little bit more. Hmm. Um, so sails need rigging. They need mass. They need gigantic, you know, wood poles that have uh, a lot of, rope and sails and canvas on it so a, 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 a lot sh- of people who aren't afraid of heights <laughs> exactly mm. so it's hard to have it you know when you have your guns low and pointing to the left or to the right you don't have to worry about all of that nonsense upstairs but you know when you're doing guns that can move back and forth you want them up higher because you want to, them to be able to go left and right and up and down they have to or to go shoot into the back or if hey turn it around 180 degrees the whole purpose of it but also you don't really want to shoot through your mass as it turns out. Mm-hmm. Um, the only way oh, for these, seems weird, Francis. yeah, well, the only <laughs> way for these things to be useful is they have to be set high, high, high up onto the ship. Um, now, if you have been listening to this show for long enough, or you know anything about uh, engineering, high center of gravity, not a great idea um, for yeah, anything. A bunch it, of like famous warships, all of which just capsized instantly because they fucked up the weight mm-hmm. on like where the guns were. And that was when it was low down, even like Mary Rose, Vasa, tons of these. Yeah. So all of the uh, original kind of well, plans. Tons that Col- of ship is still one ship. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> well, okay, fine. Uh, Two ships. Yeah. <laughs> So there's a lot of turret ships that were made before the uh, before this one. There, there's the uh, as we talked about the Prince Albert. There's all kinds of this. Like let's just put one, put two on it. You know, very simple simple things where they say we have a ship. Let's put a turret on it. Let's float it around and see how it does. And it's you know it doesn't really have to go into battle, but people can do drills on it. You know they they do uh, you know how long does it take to to fire? You know and each each time is like about two minutes with a uh, a. a a team that knew what the fuck they were doing, uh, which you know, wasn't all the time. But if you're doing coastal defense, what else do you have to do other than, you know, drills back and forth about how to turn the thing left and right? So uh, the the original Cole's original plans for the run one turret ship, um, what it had kind of a uh, a low um, a, a low profile mast uh, and rigging system, and it's called the HMS Monarch. So. There was no, th- this first one that uh, Cole's designed was just like, what if we took any old ship and just put this thing on it? And, um, you know, we're not going to change the forecastle and we're not going to change the poop deck. Uh, two things, <laughs> I know. But the forecastle, when you look at a ship and there's a forward part that's like higher up and that's where like the captain's quarters are and whatever, that's the forecastle. The poop deck is the same thing, but on the back. It's basically the roof of these of these kind of cabin areas so um you have now effectively just made well shooting forward and backward is completely useless because we have a whole bunch of boat here mm-hmm. uh and this is why they kept kind of saying like coles look we like the idea but you got to fuck off with your ideas because they're not they're not good you don't have good ideas so coles um not a man to be told no uh because he was rich and white and british uh <laughs> he decided to um m- launch an entire uh attack politically in all the newspapers and anything against uh robert spencer robinson who was the controller of the navy at the time uh he's basically like fuck this guy he doesn't know what he's talking about he's gonna ruin all these things sort of from, uh, from that i'm the only one this, who can design this you, you're like rice of appeal as a naval officer if your chain of command doesn't like something is you just kind of like start attacking them in public in the press and just hope that that works like that's how the fuck you're, you're right you yeah. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> They still do that. That's just Twitter. Yeah. Like this is, you know, Coles didn't have Twitter at the time. He just had to, you know, write very long letters to his friends at the newspapers. So he pestered these guys so much that they finally just said, "Fine, fuck it, go away, and you can build your ship," uh, which is not a great, um, you know, start to building the ship. 
is um, you're bothering us too much and we want you to stop. That ensures mm-hmm. quality control. It's yes. uh, nothing but nothing but good times and good vibes. Uh, next slide, please. Hi, it's Justin. Uh, so this is a commercial for the podcast that you're already listening to. Uh, people are annoyed by these, so let me get to the point. We have this thing called Patreon, right? The deal is you give us two bucks a month, and we give you an extra episode once a month. Uh, sometimes it's a little inconsistent, but, you know, it's two bucks. You get what you pay for. Um, it also gets you our full back catalog of bonus episodes, So you can learn about exciting topics like guns, pickup trucks, or pickup trucks with guns on them. The money we raise through Patreon goes to making sure that the only ad you hear on this podcast is this one. Anyway, that's something to consider if you have two bucks to spare each month. Uh, Join at patreon.com forward slash WTYP pod. Do it if you want. Or don't. It's your decision, and we respect that. Back to the show. Okay. There we go. Now there is the captain. So let's take a look at this ship. The it's idea ugly was as sin. She's like yeah. a oh, cutaway demonstration. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Like I was about so, to say. Here's the plan. To. This Hit. looks like a row row ship, but like the entire side comes off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's no doors, it's collapsible. I imagine. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it's a, it's just the balsa wood ship. It's fine. Look, so this is this is the captain. Now let's talk about this design as as we are discussing um, that you immediately notice. So the reasoning for what we're looking at is. They decided that the they, they were going to put four guns and two turrets on the top of this uh, thing. But of course, as we said, it has to be up pretty high. So to balance out, what they did is they went down below and they said, we're going to cut out all of this like lower area. Uh, and the freeboard, which is basically the, the, the freeboard space is the space between the waterline and the deck. And which is usually at about 14 to 18 feet, depending on the weight of the ship. Your, your um, margin of error for getting your shoes wet. Right. Yeah. And, and you, it's, that's you know, part of the balance and the ballast. You go up and down and you want to you wanna stay away from the ocean as much as you can, obviously. Um, so he decided here, it's like, well, what we're going to do is we're going to actually make this eight feet off. Because the idea, the idea here is that when normal, normal usage of this boat It'll tilt side to side, but the water will simply wash over this lower deck onto the other side and help <laughs> oh, balance oh, it out. No. It's now, a on. semi-submersible. Exactly. Hold on. <laughs> as long as both sides are open, you're not going to get the free surface effect as bad. <laughs> that's true. Right. It's, it's, that's science. The idea, <laughs> the idea of it is not, at its at its core it makes sense somebody thought about this somebody thought this yeah. kind of through yeah <laughs> um it makes it makes kind of sense uh so they you know, they they've designed this uh as you said about 8 feet and really it was more about six and a half feet after they put everything on because it's not just the gun it's not just the turret it's all the shielding it's all the armor and everything uh so they they created the ship and they put this big gap underneath there they're like all right let's get rid of Let's get rid of the, the the forecastle. Let's get rid of the poop. There's nothing there. No, we don't need anything there. Uh, let's get rid of everything on, on the bottom. We're going to create this false second deck that everybody's going to be on. And everybody said, cool, that sounds great. But this is not a coastal defense ship. This is not something that you go out and you tool around for a bit and then you go back. This is supposed to be an over, you know, over the seas kind of long haul. I mean, we can 18... take it. 1860s Royal Navy ocean going means ocean going. Like you could sit, fucking take this thing to Hong Kong and back. You yeah. know? Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. So and, and they want to be able to do that with this. So uh, they they came up with all of this, um, and, and they said, "Well, we've got all this space down here, and we need a place to, to put things that you need for a boat, like you know your your sailors, um, the food for the sailors, the water for the sailors, the things like, for the sailors, lockers um, all of, of porno your mags that accumulate mm-hmm. on any sort of ship yeah, after all your, long enough. All your rats need right, to be well, somewhere. Well, this um, yeah, rats got to have a home too. I don't yeah, think it'd yeah. be porno mags. I think it'd be porno wood cuttings. 
Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, look, at, look at the toes on that girl. Everybody's joking off to a bunch of wood burnings in the basement. Yeah, yeah, look at the ankles. Oh, look how long <laughs> the S's are. <laughs> So uh, they had this, you know, this idea and you know what? They took it out for a couple of trials and they're like, you know what? This isn't that bad of an idea. It kind of works. Um, but again, where, where do you put, where do you put your boat stuff? Where do you put your, your sailors? So they're like, well, what if, what if we just put like a little forecastle down here, just down here, not up on top where it's going to interfere with the turret, just down here between the, uh, the, the main deck and the, uh, the second deck. And then they said, you know what? We got all these things things we have all these like boxes of things that we need for a ship um things like ammunition Rum. things like uh, clothes yes yeah uh. so you got to put that stuff somewhere so they're like well we got this big open area down there lash all that shit on down there we're gonna be perfectly fine so they took the captain out they had to do shore and gunnery trials it did great it was doing wonderful uh, it was, you know, the water slashed back and forth and everything was working great. So they said, look, we're going to start taking it out on some real maneuvers. And they took it down to the Mediterranean. They had to be a part of a, uh, uh, kind of, a con, I don't know what a convoy of ship is, is a flotilla. I don't know, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. you know, a bunch of, a bunch of boats get together and they go boat around somewhere. Um, <laughs> as, as you know, you don't you don't go out on your own as a military vehicle of any kind. You go out with uh, a group. So uh, they all go out um, and and they uh, have have a good time um, up until about September 6th, 1870. Um, oh, God. Now. Now we're at a specific date. So guess that's what? That's how you know it's good. Right, that's, that means something good is going to happen. Yeah. Yes, that's when, the, yes, that's, when that's gets, how you know the boat will work. That's when it's going to get spicy. Um, so the there's a, there's a bit of a squall, not a big one, but not a small one either. And they noticed that the captain was kind of healing left and right. And they put it at about 18 degrees. And they're like, well, that's fine. Uh, it should be able to survive up to like 25. Now, when they say should, um, that doesn't yeah. mean that they went out and tested it and like tipped it and just like does it if we do it if we do it this far. By the calculations we made a twelve year old do. Didn't yeah. they didn't they have computer modeling back then? Uh they unfortunately <laughs> CAD crashed on them and so they had to do it all by hand. Uh, <laughs> doing yeah, they're, CAD they're, on like an adding machine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> should have so, should have called up Charles Babbage for this one. <laughs> <laughs> so uh Around midnight, uh, the, the ship heals and it heals and it heals. And then suddenly there's another, there's a small boat uh, with about 27 people on it saying the boat sank, um, killed 480 people uh, on this, this one ship. I don't, I, which I don't how, know how, where were they? I don't, I'm how, how, how did the, you put was, that many people on there? L Real looking, looking this up, I, I discovered that it's sort of an like an exhibition thing. It kills the commander in chief of the Mediterranean squadron, uh, that admiral. It kills its designer, which I like. Uh, it also kills, and this is a real way to like lose favor and like lose influence. It kills both sons of the Secretary of State for War and the First Lord of the Admiralty. So suddenly, very unpopular. This, a, this Coles is, is lucky he died on this. Um, yeah, because genuinely. Because if he didn't, he would have died somewhere else. This is this is like a sort of um, like a prestige assignment, right? This is something you get your like fail son on, and you can be like, "Hey, check out the future. Look at uh, the right. new boat. You definitely won't die on it." Yeah, <laughs> it's a new ship. There's like 17 more ships out here. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, and what possibly goes wrong is that, you know, you don't really have, like, technology to talk to each other. So, like, when it flipped over, it took, like, ten minutes to sink. But Boats nobody really knew. down, Mr. Bond. Yeah. Yes. Boat tip over and go uh, goes goodbye afterwards. Mm. So the subsequent court-martial, um, everything about this ship was pretty much fucked from the beginning. Um, the stabilizing weight wasn't wasn't good enough. Like, the, um, the ballast yeah. weight wasn't good enough because they lowered the freeboard. Um, the incline tests were done, but the results were not like published before they took it out to sea. Uh, the inquiry found the captain, uh, was built in deference to the public opinion, uh, expressed in parliament and in opposition to views, uh, and opinions of the controller of his department. Yeah, uh, they, the, it, they went around the guy by going to public opinion or like, let me build my weird boat. The other detail about this that I, I found is that, um... Coles was also like sick for most of the 
time they were yes. building it. Don't yep. know with what. Like uh, for all I know, diphtheria. hemorrhoids or something. There's always diphtheria. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he, was, he was wasting disease, shitting out of his ass or whatever. Yeah. And so, oh, you know, whatever the drawing sort of pass him by, well, he's like, that's, yeah, that's probably fine. the best place to shit, admittedly. <laughs> But that's true. If you're sure. if you're using another orifice, that's not so good. Like out of your ear, that's a problem. Shitting out of your mouth, baby. <laughs> oh, butt plug. Yeah, it's just podcasting. Yeah. <laughs> you guys pay for this. Yeah. He was shitting out of his colostomy hole. This one. Yeah. And um, yeah. So yeah, they pretty much found out that uh, everything, n- none of this should have happened. Uh, this entire thing was completely avoidable. It had anybody, you know, uh, stopped and thought and, you know, just been like, maybe I, maybe we tell this guy to fuck off instead of just saying, yeah, here you go, have some money and like some of our favorite sons and put them on a boat and let's see what happens. Because uh, usually what happens is everybody dies. Uh, so, so next slide, please, because we're gonna get we're gonna get to some aftermath here. Now, this is a memorial plaque at the uh, West- Westminster Abbey. Uh, there is also an entire stained glass window dedicated to the uh, uh, to the sinking of the captain. I, they're really oh, not sort of I... hiding their light under a bushel in terms of how badly they got owned here. Um, I, I probably, I probably, I probably mm-hmm. saw Finisterra, this when yeah. I was eleven and yeah. don't remember it. <laughs> this, is, this is a like also an interesting use of perishing in the service of your country because the service you're providing to your country is like Crash your country now. Dummy. Yeah, your country now knows that this kind of boat doesn't work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Turns well, out you know what? eight feet of freeboard was a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, I pretty <laughs> sure that J- was J- J- J.K. I'm, Simmons I'm, saying. Well, what did we learn? Well, I guess we learned not to do that again, <laughs> didn't we? Yeah, I, I was about to say. I think the Vikings figured that out. Maybe the ancient Greeks. I <laughs> You know what? I watched 300 Part 2, and none of those Greeks had turret guns, so Cowper, yeah. Cowper was trying to do something different. But I think the Greeks had more than eight feet of freeboard, too. <laughs> didn't didn't the trireme? monitor itself <laughs> sink because of, like, basically the same issue of having, like, no freeboard? You, you gotta stop, like, in you have to invent better waterproofing if you're gonna have a Water boat that shouldn't sort of... be on the ship. Like, yeah. and if, it, like, if it is, it shouldn't get in the ship because the thing about yeah. water is that it's very gregarious, and if it gets into your ship, it invites all of its friends, and then it, yeah. they yeah. all drag you down and to like hang out with them forever. Yeah, and and also there's lots of salt in it. Uh, mm-hmm. There's lots. Of, there's lots very of fish poop equipment. in it. Also yeah, not good. Yeah, yeah. Don't want uh, any of that near you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you want to stay dry because apart from anything else, you know, you make your best decisions when you don't have like wet socks or whatever, which you will have True. if you're drowning. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so next slide, please. So governments will absolve themselves of wrongdoing, um, and that was going to be the case here. Uh, Scott, this is Scottish scientist John Scott Russell. Uh, he wrote in this period. What's that? Is that is that Lord Kelvin? Uh, I don't. Because I th- th- like everything around here is named after this guy. If so, well, he's like the father of fluid dynamics. I think he may genuinely be. Um... He built the Great Eastern. Huh. No, that was his Empire Kingdom, Brunel. Uh, w- yeah, William t- William <laughs> Thompson, <laughs> different guy. John Scott Russell was a Scottish c- uh, civil engineer, naval architect, and shipbuilder who built Great Eastern in collaboration with Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Literally the first sentence of the wiki. Okay. <laughs> this, okay. Is, this is the podcast Liam where we do our research live. gets real excited when he's right for a, for a, yeah, for a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, you know, you know who built Great Eastern? Workers. Yeah. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. Um, <laughs> questions from a worker who reads. You know, you know who I think built Great Eastern? It's aliens. Yeah, I'll, I'll also take aliens. aliens because I think it upsets it was, Roz. It was the Tartarians. <laughs> oh, he did the waveline system and uh, the Doppler effect. We're about to get a bunch of comments, a lot like the JFK people that are like, yo, you actually didn't do the most basic research about the Tartarians. Um, (laughs) It's really sloppy how you didn't do any research into Tartaria. You could have at least skimmed the Wikipedia before you mentioned it on the show. Nope, shut up. (laughs) (laughs) Hey man, where do you think I did most of the research here? Uh, (laughs) Go go watch Mia Mulder's video about Tartaria, actually. Oh yeah. That's really good. That's a good one, yeah, I watched that one, that was good. So um, Russell in Macmillan's goes through pretty much everything that we're talking about here. Um, a, a big chunk of technical specifications, you know, once they came in, he also points out that this all could have been avoided had, you know, the Admiralty 
just told Coles to fuck off. Like every mm. bit of this could have stopped. But they, they had Cole... some more like self respect instead of allowing right. themselves to be bullied. Don't don't let a man. You're the Navy. Don't be bullied by a man. How are you as a Navy <laughs> being bullied by a man? I was Come about on to now. say he's just a man. You have ships with guns, right? Shoot, shoot, him. <laughs> shoot him. Like yes, you can't turn it left and right yet, but you can just make him run up and down, and you'll be fine. You get him. Uh, he also, uh, you know, calls out the shipbuilders. Uh, he calls out the ho- House of Commons because no one who knew how to build ships was actually involved in this. They didn't go find a German, I guess, to help them uh, <laughs> yeah. with with engineering. Um, and he points out in this that the military, that the Navy is supposed to be war, not for political favor, uh, which is thankfully a thing that we never see happen again after this. Well, no, Everybody it, learned yeah, that's their That's absolutely lessons. true, yeah. So I have a quote here. Uh, in his own business, every Englishman would repudiate and re- excuse me, would repudiate and ridicule the interference of an ignoramus in matters of his own knowledge or trade. Is it patriotism or want of patriotism, which makes English citizens elevated to the rank of legislators dabble most earnestly in those matters of public safety, which they do not understand? All of those questions are answered by the captain. Um, As we see, all these things are going to happen. Uh, and everybody's going to fucking die because nobody wants to, uh, you know, nobody wants to say, look, you don't know how to sh- build a ship. Shut the fuck up. I know how to build a ship. <laughs> you build the gun. Mm-hmm. I'll build the ship like the A-10. Somebody yeah. built a gun. They built an airplane around it. Do that. Yes. So uh, Russell points out that everybody, um, you know, who knew how to do like somebody should have stopped it uh, and nobody does. But. In the end, he blames the politicians for letting Coles get as far as he did, but really absolves Coles because, you know, nobody, st- it's not Coles' fault. Nobody stopped him, um, which is, <laughs> which is, you let this, you let That's... this idiot sort of fly the plane, so to speak. Right. right. Yeah. It's your own fault for being bullied by a guy. <laughs> like, don't. You're the Navy, he, right? Get it together. He posted some mean fucking tweets and then you just collapsed <laughs> under it. Like, this. That you can't do that. So, um, in the end, he had uh, a final verdict, and that is on our final slide here. Lost by the act yes. of God. It's, yeah, it's a mysterious thought. act of God's of God. love. Love, it's right? True. Of course. So, I, I hope I hope you all learned um, that if you're going to make a boat, uh, make it a boat and not whatever the fuck the captain was, because that was not a boat. I would say, generally speaking, if you are making an ocean-going vessel, you should have more than eight feet of freeboard. Yeah. I am, I am holding my lighter in the air, and I'm yelling at the band on stage, "Freeboard, freeboard, freeboard!" freeboard. freeboard. <laughs> I don't give a shit about the time change signature. Time signature change. Shut up. Play it. <laughs> I, oh, what a I like fucking I said, disaster. Yeah, and it killed 800 people. And it killed, like you said, Alice, so many people who were like the sons of important people. Like this, this, this is at a time, like now I, I would hope that most people would be smart enough to be like, oh, that experimental ship, that looks cool. I'm not going to put my son on it though. Um, <laughs> you go ahead and put all those other dipshits out on it. If it goes out and comes back a few times, we're going to be fine. And to be fair, everybody was uh, lured into a false sense of security because it did all right. Um, it didn't sink. It was involved in an earlier squall and it didn't sink. So everybody's like, ah, cool. It works. It's not like one of those, it went out and then immediately just sank and everybody died. Uh, they, they were lured. The, the, the HMS captain called the siren call of like, no, it's totally (laughs) safe. Look at me. I go 18 degrees one way and 18 degrees the other. My water washes (laughs) from one side to the other. And it's great. Let's go to the Mediterranean guys. Whoops. I'm upside down now. (laughs) Moral of the story is if you see a ship with a big hole in it, don't go to that ship. Don't get yeah. on it. Don't put don't holes be, in your ship. It's it's, it's yeah. the wrong kind of vehicle to have a convertible on. Yes. So that's all I have on the captain. Fantastic. Well, wow. I think we all learned a lot. And, you know, yes. namely, don't put a big hole in the side of the ship. Yeah, do that. Hole, or hole leave the bad. hole open don't don't put a hole in it like that was that was a, a an engineered hole there was a whole reason hmm. for that hole i know but uh, there sure are about holes it, yeah. in the bottoms of ships that are for like you know bilge something or other it, you know water comes in water goes out but like if you're going to put a hole in there specifically don't immediately block so, something hole up. something i'm always saying if you're gonna get an engineered hole put in you have to go to the experts 
Right. Yes. Like sometimes you need a hole. Sometimes you don't. Yes. If you need a hole, sometimes put a hole there. You there. Yeah. If you don't, <laughs> plug your hole up. It's fine. Water <laughs> goes in, water hole. comes out. You can't explain that. <laughs> <laughs> If the water needs to go into your hole and come back out, then it should do that. Don't yes. don't <laughs> deny your hole the water it deserves. Jesus fucking Christ, people. <laughs> we have a segment on this podcast called Safety Third. Shake hands with danger. Speaking of hello, folks. Hello, Justin, Alice, Liam, and guests. Don't say hi to him. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. In the field of commercial archaeology. Oh, boy. <laughs> Wait. Okay. Accidents are thankfully very rare, but they I'm not do sure happen. that's true. I've seen some documentaries where, like, a commercial archaeologist gets chased by, like, a big rolling stone ball out of a temple. Um, you know, not, some of those no. Nazis are there. Um, Indiana Jones is an academic ar- archaeologist, not a commercial one. Yeah, Alice, you're thinking of Jurassic Park, buddy. Ah, okay, okay. They are also not commercial archaeologists. Shut the fuck are. up! That's a paleontologist. A commercial, a commercial archaeologist is Let's like... Let's go! Let's go! Tell yeah, the story, I want to get drunk. A commercial archaeologist is like when you uh, have somebody who is really pretty and pretends to be an archaeologist for the TV. So a commercial archaeologist is like the French guy in uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, right? It's always the French guy. No. A commercial archaeologist is when you are, you are doing some kind of infrastructure or building project in a protected area where there may be archaeological remains, so you have to go and do an archaeological dig before you build the new thing. Like if you're, let's say, hypothetically, you were trying to build a metro station in the Roman Forum. Well, you need to bring in some commercial archaeologists to do some excavations before and as okay. you do the main excavation, right? Sure. Um, which is why that metro station has taken so long to build. Because they keep finding stuff, because it's the goddamn forum. Right. <laughs> fucking, fucking Romans and their building yeah. things to last. Fucking Roma, Romans and Etruscans and whoever was before that. <laughs> I, I I heard on a TikTok that Rome wasn't real, so um, uh, they're they're obviously just making this up because uh, they're lazy. The, the 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 phrase That's I a heard. Time hypothesis. Yes. No, no, no. This is a different one. This is like what? this is this is an amal- that, that Rome was an amalgamation of quote native European cultures unquote. Shut and the I'm just fuck imagining, up. No, it wasn't. No, Who, I'm imagining. The idea is that there are no primary sources by Romans, which is not in <laughs> like that. That's that, like that, that, that true is nowhere the, near true. Like <laughs> only the dumbest possible sense. Like if what you're saying there's is there's no Rome d- because there's absolutely no way that Romulus could have been suckling the teat of a wolf to survive. Yeah, all right. Yeah, so that's every, fan obviously mm, it's not everything possible. else is bullshit after that. Mm-hmm. I'm just imagining you're in northern Italy and you, you have to make a land acknowledgement to the people of Cisalpine <laughs> Gaul. <laughs> <laughs> land acknowledgement for the Visigoths. The yeah. Sabines. Yeah. <laughs> European land acknowledgements go fucking hard. Like, yeah. who, <laughs> this is coming which, to you from like stolen Pictish land. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just living anywhere in the German countryside has got to be Ooh, confusing yeah. as hell. This is on stolen uh, Prussian land. Like, <laughs> an hour and a half long land acknowledgement for every different part of the Holy Roman Empire that's been over those lands. Just finally get up to the Ottoman Empire and then be like, and uh, then the Soviets took over, I guess. So <laughs> there you go. This is unceded Ulmish land. <laughs> anyway in the field of commercial archaeology accidents are thankfully very rare but if they do happen especially if people they do happen especially if people ignore established safety protocols this is a story of supervision failure and how a quote common sense unquote approach to health and safety leads to accidents that matters those were single quotes not doubles Hmm. um (coughs) but the rules are there for a reason but first what is commercial archaeology we've we've (laughs) been over this it's when indiana jones sells out yeah 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 yeah. all right we already went through this i mean in many parts of the world archaeology has to be undertaken before any construction work does the not mitigate it it's not the not fun explanation we get it yes exactly (laughs) it's the not fun kind of archaeology (laughs) this is paid for by whoever is doing the development under the 
uh, under the polluter pays principle, right? Um, in terms of the day to day, it involves archaeologists hand excavating features like ditches, pits, foundations, and graves, not just to recover finds from inside of them, but crucially to build up an understanding of the order in which these features were created and from there construct a story of how a place, which is the site, changed and developed over time. It's basically being a history detective. Here Very is a cold picture. Cases. Here is a picture. Is that what this person calls themselves? Yes. Here's a picture of a pretty typical archaeological site showing features and excavated segments among them. Uh, Now now the story. I picked. I turned up midway through a large ongoing project. It was part of a national infrastructure project, and there are about forty archaeologists, many of them inexperienced. There was also a gang of ground workers to push our wheelbarrows for us a highly unusual state of affairs I had never encountered before nor since. Yeah, archaeologists swore off of those guys after they threw them the idol and then they wouldn't throw them the vine back. (laughs) (laughs) Shortly before I arrived, there had been an accident. Now, when we dig features, we typically dig a segment and leave one or two vertical sections, as in a cross-section, so that we can see how the deposit sits on top of one another. The section is the weakest part of the segment, especially if you don't dig perfectly plumb and undermine it. As an industry standard, we don't dig below 1.2 meters without shoring or stepping, because being in a hole is a confined space. It's true. It's dangerous. I'm saying this. Yes. Yeah. Because, again, this is putting a hole where a hole doesn't really belong, so you got to yeah. be careful about your holes. Let's not be essentialist about this. You can put a hole wherever you want. You can, but sometimes holes are dangerous. That's all, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> On very sandy sites, which this one was, that limit should be even less because the ground is soft and more prone to collapse. Well, it had a section collapse in a way that was completely predictable and 100% unavoidable. One of the aforementioned less experienced archaeologists had reached a 1.2 meter level in depth and kept going down to about 1.4 meters, almost out of her own depth when stood up. In addition, she had situated her wheelbarrow right on top of the section, which is the weakest point, uh, right above her, and so was raising the spoil way over her head to load it. (laughs) So just like digging and tossing it over her head, just into the wheelbarrow, like a cartoon uh, character. Exactly. Yes. Well, that's smart because uh, then you don't have to like move it again out of the spoil heap into the wheelbarrow. It's just like I wouldn't, those. I, it's just like those guys on YouTube who make the secret underground houses. You know? Oh God! Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a man's a man's uh, desire to tunnel is just one that you have to let him have. That's this is true. true, but th- this is apparently a woman, though. Well, this archaeology archaeologists in general, I feel, are just always itching to dig a hole yeah. somewhere. They're mm. all they're all technically men. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Again, let's not be essentialist about this. <laughs> <laughs> Below is a picture of this sort of unsafe situation when I drew a box around. That's a steel wear- wheelbarrow with a 90 liter capacity. Sand weighs about 1.6 kilograms a liter. I don't know what these measurements mean. Um, a safe load <laughs> is about 60 liter, but you can keep piling it as high as you like. You will notice in the picture, I have barely loaded my wheelbarrow Uh, Because I am not a dumbass. (laughs) (laughs) Well, the inevitable happened. While she was crouched in the bottom of the hole, the section gave way, and with it came tumbling down on top of her a fully laden wheelbarrow. Luckily, she was quickly extracted, but suffered a concussion and a fractured collarbone. She was lucky and got off lightly. But following the incident, the principal contractor banned us from pushing our own wheelbarrows, we forked out for the ground workers to do it for us. No, you're not, you're not qualified to use these anymore. I can't. Yeah. Are you are you forklift qualified? Fuck that. Are you wheelbarrow oh, qualified? Are you wheelbarrow qualified? <laughs> can, you, can you handle a wheelbarrow, college boy? <laughs> Seemingly not, you know? Apparently not, no. Apparently not. But how is this allowed to happen? It seems like pretty common sense that you don't dig yourself a grave-shaped hole put yourself into it, and then position your spoil right on top of yourself at the weakest part, ready to fall in and bury you. 
But common the, sense isn't the, just that the common. Mo- the most confusing, um, like suicide attempt by uh, Wiley Coyote here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but common sense isn't that common, and that's why we have rules. So, what happened to the rules in this case? Um. Ordinarily, so, I just didn't find follow him. I guess yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Or- I'll do it. Ordinarily, you'd have between five to ten archaeologists on a site with one supervisor to run the day-to-day and a project officer looking after the big picture stuff. The site had 40 people with one project officer we saw once every other day (laughs) and two supervisors who'd been hastily promoted above the level of their competence because they were most experienced of a pretty inexperienced bunch. This is a symptom of chronic work first un- chronic workforce underinvestment and the race to the bottom that is British archaeology. Oh, don't tell me that. Don't tell me that apart from everything else, we're underfunding in this country. Like I've I've made my peace intellectually with the idea that we're underfunding the shit that matters, like the nurses and the teachers and the firefighters. Not to say that this doesn't matter, right? But it's a slightly lower priority to me than those, right? If you're telling me that the rot is setting in there too, and we can't even the fucking like, <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> dig the fucking Roman coins out of the ground without yeah, them being like, like, you could take my nurses, you could take my doctors, but my fucking commercial archaeologists, where yes. does it? <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> genuinely, <laughs> we draw our line this far, no further. This is meant to be like private sector shit that makes a profit. Like even by its own logic, capital is failing here. And yeah, no, I, I, I don't know why that bothers me, but it really does. You know, just pick up a uh, pick up any old guy with an archaeology degree. It's a very common one, right? You know, it's one of those. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like I, I'm like I understand the idea of we're not training enough doctors. Not enough people are going to medical school, right? But in in my head, part of that was like, oh, everybody's doing a bunch of other stuff. You know, maybe all the like doctors are doing archaeology degrees. Nobody's doing the fucking archaeology degrees either. Where did all these people go? What what happened? I remember. Don't say, when I don't was... say COVID to me because I know. But like, I, I when I first uh, started working for the city of Philadelphia a long time ago, I came across a, a a book showing all the prevailing wages, and it was like, you know, you get like. One of the first wages noted was an archaeologist. I was like, what the fuck did they need archaeologists for? Now we know. Um, yeah, this, yeah. <laughs> this, yeah. And it yeah, turns out mean? archaeology is actually very important to the construction process, which is surprising that they're so underpaid, considering, you know, archaeology is like, you know, that's, that's uh, certainly I, one of them. I know archaeologists. It's not. It's not strange that they're. Cr- you become an archaeologist because you love to dig holes and like yeah. study old shit, not because there's a lucrative like money sure. gain in this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, my, my that, cousin. That, that, I got the a friend highest that's an- paid. The highest paid archaeologists are the ones who consistently come in and say, "Yep, nothing here." <laughs> <laughs> Gen- genuinely, that guy's so good at his job. Not not to not to be too into the whole sort of like managed decline thing, but is there a single field of like study or expertise or work that isn't like sort of on its knees at this yeah, point? Is cri- that- yeah, it's called crypto. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, that's uh, not even schools. true anymore. Business that's... schools, <laughs> <laughs> business Genuinely. school, Harvard Law Schools, and uh, uh, crypto mining. Uh, when when, when I was still, at law school, did, there were the there were the beginnings of this happening, even at like prestigious law schools. There's. Th- if if you if you are in a field right and you feel that your field whatever it is is doing good is doing well you're happy with what you're doing please write in in the comments because I would love to hear from someone whether that's like HVAC guys or uh, fucking brain surgeons I would love to hear someone say yeah it's going great no problems here just for my I, own I went, mental I went health to, I went to <laughs> business school I got a degree in addition then I went then I went and got my MBA I can do long division now as well. <laughs> I work. I work with accountants, and I do. I, I do often just be like, "Wow, you guys got a degree in doing math, huh? And, and reading, <laughs> reading the law, and filling okay, out." Okay, uh, Ac- accountant. Accountancy is an actual per- uh, profession. I will say that. Is, <laughs> look, right. look, I, yeah. I, I know. I, I fuck with them, but I know because I do know how unnecessarily complicated our taxes are. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not. It's 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 not like this, you know, because of any, anything other than um, societal decline, I suppose. Yeah. 
I hate living in societal decline. I'd like to be living in societal good, more go up line. Well, look, everybody, everybody always thinks that they're living in the end times. So, yeah, and eventually yeah, it will be fine. because you'll die too. So it's fine. There you go. But <laughs> one day, take heart because one day you you too will die. So it's fine. And I'll get dug there up by a commercial archaeologist, maybe. And I'll say, shut up about it. <laughs> they'll, yeah, they'll dig it up. They'll dig you up and just be like, "Look at this man. Look at this jackass. <laughs> Jesus Christ!" <laughs> <Christ. laughs> yeah, just just fold both of my middle fingers up so that when exactly. every, the rest of me rots, like the bones are still in that you should, position. You, Put me in the museum should, like that. Bury me face down so when you dig me up, you can kiss my ass. We should find a way to do bone tattoos so that, like, once you dig oh, me up, no, I like, don't like that. I don't like that. The I don't like that, just, Francis. You know, I heart mom, and um, you know. <laughs> uh, don't use my dead name. Um, yeah, on this yeah, this is, is right this on is my for... femur. You want to hear an unsettling uh, statement that is absolutely true? Mm. Your bones are wet. Yeah, yeah. of course. Of yeah, course they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. One, yeah. one of those things that like it did not like doesn't make sense and isn't intuitive unless you've taken one anatomy class. Okay, like, well, I haven't. So like I, like again, for instance, yeah. when you when you pee, the pee is coming out of that's blood. That's kind of, that's blood that's getting filtered. It's not coming, it doesn't have anything to do with your digestive system directly. Um it's 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 just yeah. it's coming through your blood. Yeah, you're, you're always there, there's there's correct pissing blood and then there's incorrect pissing blood. Yes, the yeah. Fuck? The important thing is to know the difference. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you know, the human body is disgusting. That's um, right. Yeah. That's yeah. what I always tell you. Yes, but yeah. people think that they piss out of their like intestines or stomachs or something, and it's like, and then it goes to the kidneys. Yeah. It's like, no, it doesn't. It goes to the blood. I challenge blood, any woman to know where she pees from. You can't do it. Thank <laughs> my, you. Let's wrap my, this bitch up. Yeah, okay. my, my seven year old daughter last night was uh her her way of, of you don't know where you piss from that's not my problem she she was asking me if uh if she didn't want to have kids because she doesn't want to have to have surgery to have the babies taken out just like Aww. i don't know i don't know like she's homeschooled so this is obviously our fault but uh <laughs> I was like, I don't know where you get these ideas, but we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to get a book from the library, I guess. <laughs> I mean, they do. They do cesarean sections, you know. I told you that I had no idea where I peed from. And then I was like, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> you said, it's not possible. And I said, oh, it is. And I started asking people, and you found out I was right. <laughs> what? <laughs> How are you 27 years old and you don't know where you pissed from? What? I have a general idea. <laughs> I mean, I know the rhyme milk, milk, lemonade around the corner fudge is made, right? <laughs> I, you know, again, the quote, quote of the, this this entire show is, "I have a general idea." <laughs> oh my god, dude, that's All a right. that's that that's a podcast. That's a podcast. Have a good no, night. We, we didn't we didn't quite finish the safety third. <sighs> oh god, damn it. God. I still got to plug my pot, my podcast too. Don't run yeah, away yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah. I don't know okay. whether it was because the supervisors are stretched too thin, too timid to call out and correct unsafe working practices, or if they wi were willing to put getting the job done quickly above getting it done safely. Maybe a little yes. of all three. Yeah. But either way, it was a colossal failure of responsibility on their part. Uh, keep up the good work and may and thank you for making my work day a little more interesting. From Mike. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Thanks, Mike. Sorry you have to live in that one row house in Franklin with all of the other Mikes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mike, you do good work. I'm glad that we have commercial uh, archaeologists. Yes, I, I also it was fucked you. up to try and like punch Indiana Jones into that propeller, but you know, you do you. <laughs> you do what you got to yes. do. Uh, <laughs> Our next episode is on the Boston Molasses Disaster. Does anyone have any commercials Finally. before we go? We have this is your time to shine, buddy. Okay, yeah. yes. Sorry. Yes, I am on. Uh, I have a podcast called What a Hell of a Way to Die. If you are a listener here and uh, maybe you've got some tangential connection to the military, maybe you were a soldier yourself and you got out and you're like, boy, that was real fucking stupid. Uh, but you know, you, you, you want to listen to a little soldier, soldiery, uh, media that isn't full of a bunch of right wing chuds with uh, gigantic beards. What a hell of a way to die is the podcast for you. We have a Patreon. 
We have bonus episodes. We have a store where I sell all kinds of things like stickers and patches and whatnot. So let's go right, yeah. do all of those things. Twitter is collapsing. So this is this is what we have now is just being on each other's shows. Yes. <laughs> yep. We're asking right. you for $5. It's a, it's, a, it's a pleasure to have you on. And uh, we are all asking you for $5, all of us. Uh, we just, have we have live shows to advertise, don't we? We do. A, we have one live show to advertise. Um, Underground Arts in Philadelphia, December eighth. It is show number three. Show number three is different from shows number one and two, because uh, shows number one and two will be the same. Show number three will be different. I just yep. restated the same thing. Come, um, come see two so, shows yes. in a row if you want. You know, if you, you want to, yeah. yes, if you want to see what happens shows, with yeah. podca- if you want to see podcast delirium in person. Yes, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, it'll be a it'll be a horrible rolling disaster show. Come see it. Um, I will call is, in. Try not to sound like a robot this time. It'll be a good time. Yes. Yes. Well, we got to go down there and actually figure out the audio setup. Um, but yeah, this is December eighth. It is. I'd forget the time. Um, it's at Underground Arts like in Philadelphia. The third show is like nine forty-five. Uh, the third show has not sold out yet. I will put nope. the link to the tickets. But if you bought tickets to show one or two. And you want more show, uh, come to show three, because again, yeah. it will be different. You won't be bored unless it's bad, and which it could be. I don't know. And jump on this, because given that the, f- the speed with which the first two sold out, this will sell out pretty fucking quick. So uh, buy tickets, buy tickets quickly. Yes. Um, our, next, our next show is Boston Molasses Disaster, and we will see yes. you next time. Next time, yes. Next time, uh, same bad time, same bad channel. That's right. Yeah. Good night. Bye, everyone.